All right, it is now 12, 15 ish. We did our first turn at 11.30, so I know for sure that the dough has relaxed enough that we can roll it out again. But also, I want to make a note, this is also what bakers will do when they're turning their croissant dough. They'll write down when they've done everything. I mixed it at nine, I did my first turn and lock in at 11.30. So now it's 12.15, we're gonna do our first turn. And the first turn, or sorry, second turn. Second turn is gonna be a book fold. Our first turn was a letter fold. Second turn is going to be a book fold, okay? We'll show you how this works. <clears throat> and my kitchen still reads 68 degrees and this still feels pretty cold. But between this turn and the next turn, I am gonna put it into the cooler just so that it can completely relax. In a cooler setting. I also want to try and do this quickly because I don't want my bread to start proofing because there's yeast in there, right? And if it has yeast in there and butter in there, the yeasted dough, it is going to start rising as the temperature rises and that's not what I want to do when I'm trying to do my folds. All right. <clears throat> and that's right, I'm using the baby pin. So when we did this at the bakehouse, uh, I kind of miss it. Using a sheeter, something industrial. Girls like tools and toys too. Okay, it is kind of giving on me. I'm gonna flip it over. <coughs> Not gonna roll it this way at all. What I want is a big strip that I can fold over. Oh, I did that just so that I could even it out because this part was, anyway, you saw. So again, I'm going for evenness of my thickness in my dough. I want all of it to be the same thickness. And right now, this is a little bit thinner than this. So I'm gonna just roll this out a little bit more. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, that's kind of, I'm rolling it and it's shrinking back. So time is precious. That is going to be long enough. Is that going to be long enough? Let's see. Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do, what we learned to do at the bakehouse was we trimmed the edges so that we had our, uh, we had our lamination exposed. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and the reason why we did that was because how we were turning it so that we could have a continuous line of butter and dough. So, as I cut that, you can see I have a layer of butter and I have a layer of dough. Ooh, same here. Nice. So, <clears throat> Great. So now I'm going to do the book turn. So that goes both ends in <clears throat> and this would be my book spine. So now, and that's it. And what we used to do at the bakehouse was an offset book. We would come all the way over here and we would connect those two so that our butter and dough lines would continue to be continuous. And then we would fold that in half and flatten it out. But I'm doing it the school method way, which is two ends in with a spine. 
and I'm patching in my leftovers. And so I don't want a whole lot of air between here. I want to make this as tight as I possibly can. So we'll leave just a little bit of a gap. Come back over. That looks perfect. Just setting it in. Okay. I really am going on chance here, hoping that this is all going to work out. And that my butter's not shattering. And that my dough is strong enough. All right. So that's done. Wrap it up again. Air tight. Two points. Because I have done two turns. Okay. And... One hour on the clock, please, or roughly, because life happens. 12.15, we'll come back at 1.15.